Well, I think uh, that we can go ahead and, and begin. Um, friends, welcome back to this second session in the Eastertide exploration of the Psalms. Of course, in Lent, we explored the Sermon on the Mount, and that was wonderful and rich. Uh, and we learned from Dr. Amy Jo Levine uh, um, uh, through that video series. In Eastertide, we're hearing from guests uh, more personally to just us. And last week, we had Roy Heller, Dr. Roy Heller, our um, uh, beloved mentor in the Old Testament and longtime member of Transfiguration who introduced the Psalms by helping us to appreciate that they are in a sense, the word of the Lord as they are part of sacred scripture, but they might be um, better understood to be our words to the Lord, um, words that have been prayed and sung and spoken and just uttered um, in all their rawness, their raw emotion um, by the people of God for, um, for millennia. And um, I found that to be a very helpful introduction and I hope you did too. Today we turn um, a bit more personally um, into the Psalter, uh, into the language of the Psalms, as we learn from and hear from someone who uh, is quite intimately engaged with them on a very, on a daily basis. Today we welcome Brother David Bryhoff, uh, of the Society of St. John the Evangelist, an order of monks in the Episcopal Church um, that reside uh, in a monastery in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Uh, I first met Brother David um, uh, about 12 or 13 years ago uh, when I began visiting the monastery on a fairly regular basis when I lived in Rhode Island and um, became acquainted with um, several of the brothers um, and was blessed to get to know Brother David and um, have had several very important conversations to my life with him and, and uh, have been blessed by the ministry of SSJ immensely. And you can go, friend, you can go, not right now because it's a pandemic, but in non-pandemic times, you can go and you can stay in a guest house with the brothers and slip into the stream of their life together of prayer and join them um, as they gather together for the office, their daily office every day in Eucharist and share meals with them and just be immersed in that holy and, um, and tranquil place. And they of course pray in the office every day, pray the Psalms multiple times every day in such a way that it uh, becomes um, just sort of woven into their lives. And so we are so blessed to have Brother David with us tonight to talk about that experience and how he and some of his um, fellow brothers um, experienced the Psalms and, uh, and to, to guide us into their relationship with this beautiful language of scripture. Brother David, welcome. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm very pleased to be with you tonight. And uh, I've driven by your church, but I've never been able to visit it. But uh, it's wonderful to, to see you all and, and to be here to share some time with you. Um, as Casey was saying, we have um, uh, in the monastic uh, rhythm of the day and the week, we, we pause several times a day to offer prayers and those prayers are um, rooted in the Psalms. So a morning prayer, noonday prayer, evening prayer, and Compline all uh, center around the chanting of the Psalms. Um, we're fortunate in that we, we get to sing the Psalms. We, we use the ancient forms of Gregorian chant and we chant them from one side of the, of the choir to the other back and forth verse by verse. Um, so we get to experience it, um, not only uh, hearing the words and hearing the message of each psalm, but also there's, there's kind of a bodily participation in the, uh, 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 through, through the singing and through the rhythmic uh, passing the, the psalm back and forth. So we listen to a verse and then we speak a verse and we listen to a verse and speak a verse and it goes back and forth like that. Um, uh, I don't want to make it sound too romantic. 
there's some days when I get up and the last thing I want to do is pray the Psalms. But, uh, but overall, <laughs> the Psalms are a wonderful resource for us. And I, I'm so glad to be in a tradition, the monastic tradition, where monastic spirituality puts a, puts a heavy emphasis on, on Psalms. So why do we why do we pray the Psalter, or why uh, why make this a central part of monastic worship, and also make it an important part of our worship together, uh, morning and evening prayer and Compline and and at the Eucharist also uh, you'll you'll hear Psalms at almost every service. Why is it so important? And I think it's important for a couple of reasons. One is because the Psalter is the, uh, is the prayer book and the hymnal of Jesus and his disciples. Um, it was the main stay of worship in Jesus' day and the worship of ancient Israel was, uh, these Psalms played a very important part. So uh, in, in worship services, um, in, in large gatherings, in processions, as people went up to Jerusalem to offer sacrifices and stuff, they were chanting these psalms. And so Jesus knew these psalms very well. And his disciples were familiar with these psalms. So it's Jesus' uh, uh, prayer book and hymnal, as it were, and uh, shaped uh, his spirituality, his, uh, his understanding of God and of the world. And then the second reason that I think it's important to pray these Psalms and to learn them and to spend time with them is because they reveal to us essential truths. They teach us about God and they teach us about ourselves and they teach us about the realities of human existence. They have a very broad appeal because they're very diverse and speak to all kinds of conditions of, of life and conditions of persons. Here's a quote from a Jewish rabbi, Amy Scheinerman. She says, herein lies the magic of the Psalms. They speak to the individual soul and to the entire people, indeed to all souls in all times and places. While time and situations may change, human nature does not. And the Psalms speak from and to the essence of being human and in search of God in our lives. So there's something universal about these Psalms. They speak, uh, they're, they're spoken from the heart and they're spoken by people who are in various circumstances and, uh, and so we find ourselves in similar circumstances with similar emotions, and we can find in these words a great resource. So what, what do they talk about? What do they teach us about? Well, first they teach us about God, and primarily they teach us, first of all, God is our creator, that God is the one who uh, brought uh, order out of chaos. God is the one who now rules all that is. And uh, the, the Psalms praise the God of creation, and they, under, they underscore his supremacy and his power, but they also reveal his kindness and goodness. So on the one hand, the Psalms uh, tell us that God is king and Lord, and on the other, uh, it tells us that God is a shepherd, and he's our rock and our refuge. And uh, so we're assured that we're safe in God's care. So they reveal to us that God is the God of creation who upholds everything in his hands and, and is the, uh, the force that keeps life going. And then also that God is the source of our salvation. The Psalms recall the history of Israel and Israel's deliverance out of slavery and their wandering through the wilderness and their entrance into the promised land and their exile uh, to Babylon uh, later on. And so the, the times that God has intervened and saved the people are recorded and they're used as uh, 
uh, they're used as songs and poetry to celebrate these moments of salvation. And so they're also, uh, uh, they also point us to God as the one who is able to save us and the one in whom we should put our trust. So uh, save us from sickness, from death, from our enemies. Uh, all of that salvation and deliverance come from God and in God alone, says the psalm, that say the psalms uh, is our hope. So they teach us about God, but they also teach us about ourselves. And they reveal the depth and the heights of human experience. Sometimes we see the psalmist caught up in wonder and love and praise at the power and goodness of God. We have psalms such as this, Psalm 147, hallelujah. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant it is to honor him with praise. You can just feel the, the heart is full and, uh, of praise and thanksgiving and, and bursting almost. How good it is to sing God's praises. Or um, this, Psalm 103, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. He forgives all your sins and heals all your infirmities. He redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with mercy and loving kindness. He satisfies you with good things and your youth is renewed like an eagle's. So here the psalmist is expressing deep gratitude and uh, recognizing the blessings of life that surround him. So we have exuberant praise. We have heartfelt thanksgiving. We also have a hunger and a thirst for God. The Psalms express this yearning that so many of us feel at different points in our life where we're hungry for God and thirsting for God. Um, Psalm 63, oh God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you, my soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you, as in a barren and dry land where there is no water. For your loving kindness is better than life itself. My lips will give you praise. So here the psalmist is putting into, into words the desire in his heart, the desire to know God and to... Uh, um, to be one with God. Uh, my soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you. There's a lot of this kind of passionate language of desire and love uh, throughout the Psalms. But there's also times when we are uh, not in such a place where we're maybe hurting or we're suffering. And the Psalms uh, speak to this too. Here's Psalm 13, the psalmist says, how long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? He's, he's speaking out of his, his own hurt, his own suffering, and, and God seems hidden. Uh, God seems not to be showing God's face now. He feels uh, alone and abandoned, and he cries out from this deep place. In his, uh, in his heart. How long shall I have perplexity in my mind and grief in my heart day after day? How long shall the enemy triumph over me? Look upon me and answer me, O Lord my God. Give light to my eyes, lest I sleep in death lest my enemies say I have prevailed over him and my foes rejoice that I've fallen. So there's a heartfelt cry from a place of distress. Uh, or here, Psalm, 30, Psalm 38, uh, from, from personal distress, from sin and uh, guilt, uh, the psalmist cries out, uh, he's, he's, this is a, sign, a psalm of penitence and lamenting our sins. Oh Lord, do not rebuke me in your anger. Do not punish me in your wrath, for your arrows have already pierced me. 
and your hand presses hard upon me. There's no health in my flesh because of your indignation. There's no soundness in my body because of my sin, for my iniquities overwhelm me. Like a heavy burden, they are too much for me to bear. So uh, you see the range of emotion that we have in the Psalms and the range of human experience. Everything from uh, shouts of praise and thanksgiving to deep lament and uh, crying out from a place of suffering. So there's a, there's a broad uh, spectrum and the Psalms are unusually honest and vulnerable and transparent. They are raw in a way. Uh, they're, they're not hiding anything. They're not making it look pretty or sound pretty. This is, this is real human experience that's being expressed, which is why uh, we find such a deep connection when we pray with these words. So how, how can you pray with the Psalms? Well, I, I, one way is to pray the daily office, to join with the church in its recitation of the Psalms as, as we do here at the monastery. But uh, I think a, a, an even richer way for us personally to pray is to take these psalms ourselves and take them into the recesses of our heart and to meditate on them and to chew on the words and to absorb the meaning. And when we, when we do that, uh, sometimes uh, the, the best way to pray a psalm is to enter into the mindset of the psalmist to try to feel what he's feeling or to, to sympathize and to empathize with, with where he's coming from. And sometimes we might find that easy to do. We might uh, read a Psalm of praise and it resonates with us because we're in a very happy place in life and we've got a lot to thank and praise God for. Other times we may find it easy to resonate with a Psalm of suffering or lament where we feel lost or we feel forgotten by God or we wonder how long our suffering will last until we get some relief or we, we hunger to be saved, uh, rescued, delivered by God. So sometimes it's easy to connect our experience with the experience of the psalmist and take his words as our words and use them to express our own uh, desires and hopes and love and praise to God. But sometimes uh, we're, we're praying with a psalm that is not immediately accessible to us. And then we need to lay aside our present mood or our present concern in order to identify with that dimension of human experience that's being expressed in the words of the psalm. So, for example, I, I quoted from Psalm 13, and uh, it may be you come across Psalm 13 one day, and you're going, how long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? And you say, well, that, I'm not there today at all. You know, I'm in quite good space. I, I, I can't really relate to this. But here's a chance for you to just set aside your own personal circumstances and to appreciate the cry of the psalmist here. And it's one of the ways in which we connect with one another and with the whole world. Somewhere in the world, maybe somewhere in your neighborhood, maybe someone in your family might be feeling these words. These words might be expressing exactly what they're going through. And so if it doesn't resonate with us automatically and easily, we can just set aside for a moment and enter the, into this experience and try to imagine who might be saying these words. You know, might they be uh, people locked in poverty or might they be uh, people who have not been loved or who have been rejected by their families or uh, who, who might express these words? Will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? So we try to use that as, a, as an opening for intercession 
for uh, identifying ourselves. Sometimes we read uh, what are called imprecatory psalms, or they're kind of violent. It's, it's shaking your fist at God. And uh, this could be read that way. How long will you, <laughs> will you leave me forever? Uh, and, uh, and it may be difficult for us to imagine ourselves uh, shaking our fist at God. But we, we think, let's think about something that raises that kind of uh, feeling within us. Maybe, maybe a friend of ours is locked in, in addiction or, and we've watched his suffering and uh, the slide into deeper and deeper addiction. And, and uh, we cry out to God expressing some of our frustration and pain and uh, our suffering because of this situation. So these, these psalms can become prayers for ourselves, or they can become prayers for others. Uh, we, we join with them in their suffering, in their pain, and we relate to them uh, on the wide spectrum of, of human experience. And just as uh, we, uh, the other, the converse might be true too. We might be suffering on a particular day, feeling a lot of pain or sorrow. And we read a jubilant uh, a psalm of praise and thanksgiving. And we say, well, uh, I'm not there today. I'd like to be there. <laughs> I hope I can move that way. But I, I know that there are people in the world who are experiencing the love and blessing of God now. And even though I don't, I, I wish them well. And I think of them and I intercede for them. And may they continue to be blessed and rejoice in God's salvation in their own lives. So uh, our own experience can help us enter in, but also our appreciation of the experience of other people who might be in a different situation than we. In our, uh, in every monastic community has a rule of life. And it describes how we try to live together in, in the monastery, what our focus, what our purpose is, why we do the things we do. And uh, here in chapter 18 of our rule, it talks about the use of the Psalter. It says, our praying of the Psalter, which is the heart of the daily office, uh, that's morning prayer, noonday prayer, evening prayer, complet. Our praying of the Psalter, which is at the heart of the daily office, takes us ever deeper into the mystery of the incarnation. The Psalms give voice to the whole range of human experience, which Christ has embraced and redeemed as the savior of the world. And so part of this is uh, uh, in the Anglican tradition, the Episcopal Church, uh, we, we put a lot of emphasis on the incarnation. That's the central mystery for us, that God has taken human form and entered into our human experience, become one with us in the person of Jesus. And uh, we uh, are encouraged to become one with the peoples of the world and one with one another by entering fully into our humanity and uh, uh, embracing it and, and finding our solidarity with every person created in the image of God. Um, so these, these Psalms help us enter into their experience or help us empathize with them in whatever situation they might be in. They enlarge our hearts and they broaden our horizons and they, uh, uh, they make us mindful of people who might be in a very different situation than we are in. So I, I'd like to encourage you to, to, to study the Psalms, to um, find resource books that will give you background on the Psalms, help you understand the culture and the context in which these Psalms were written and, and the situation of a person who might be writing this, this Psalm. Uh, sometimes if we understand the historical context, the Psalm makes much more sense. And uh, some of the strangeness of the Psalm will, will fall away when we understand where this came from. You know, say, 
So this psalm is written by King David when he's being persecuted by his enemies. So here he is calling out to God for, for, for deliverance. Or this psalm rose out of the people's experience in exile. They're captives in the land of Babylon. They've been forcibly removed from Jerusalem, their home, and the temple has been destroyed and they're in utter despair. And they cry out to God in this psalm. So the Psalms, the, the historical context can uh, be very enriching for us to appreciate the time and the circumstances in which they were uh, written. Uh, but uh, also remember as you approach these, these are mostly songs and poems. And so uh, we treat them as, as such uh, and we interpret them. And they're not meant to be theological discourses or careful uh, arguments, they are, they are uh, songs and hymns, first of all. Many of them were used in public worship. And so they, uh, we appreciate them as psalms and poetry, which is one reason why I, I highly recommend to you the, the translation of the psalms that's in the Book of Common Prayer. There are various translations of the psalms. Some of them are more accurate interpretations, you know, with the word, this word in Hebrew means this, and so you can express that in a kind of an exact translation. But what this Psalter does so beautifully, the Psalms that we have in our prayer book, is they are, they are translated and interpreted uh, as the hymns and poetry that they are. And so that there's a very, there's a very um, musical, um, uh, feel to them. Uh, they're, they're very poetic. And uh, if you read them aloud, you can feel some of that rhythm and movement. That is, they're just so beautifully written. So I, I love this translation. It's my favorite translation of the Psalms, the one that we have in our prayer book. Uh, but you also may uh, uh, profit from uh, reading a different version of the Psalms. There are some inclusive language versions of the Psalms, for example, that take out some of the masculine uh, 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 language and imagery uh, and, and balance it out more. Um, so I encourage you to take these, to study them, to pray with them, to bring them into your, your own experience, to think, what does this Psalm evoke in me? What does the psalmist say that touches something in me? What thoughts does it engender? What uh, feelings does it raise? How do I find myself relating to these words right now in my present life? They can be a rich resource for us because they articulate such a range of human emotion and experience. It helps to, when you're approaching a psalm, to think, what kind of a psalm is this? Is this a psalm of praise? Is it a psalm of thanksgiving? Is it a psalm of lament? Is it a psalm of penitence? Uh, what's the flavor of this psalm so that you can enter into it more fully? Uh, and, you'll, uh, uh, and then to use these psalms in your prayers for others. If you know someone who's suffering, pray a psalm on their behalf, a psalm of suffering and, and uh, and your heart will uh, uh, be aligned with theirs in the prayer. So uh, I, I think that the Psalms have a valuable place in liturgy and uh, um, we use them constantly, but not just in the liturgy. Um, we need to take time uh, to take them deep into our, uh, into our own beings and uh, let them resonate with our experience. I've uh, sent along a little uh, handout to you of uh, some uh, recommended readings, some books that talk about how to pray with the Psalms. Um, I have also listed a couple of different translations of the Psalms that you might want to experiment with. And I listed some of my favorite Psalms. If you want to know where can I start with this, uh, here are some favorites to start with. And then I finally, I listed a a bunch of verses that uh, from the Psalms that I use as mantras. Uh, it's, 
is just a mantra is simply a, a verse or a word of scripture that you repeat gently to yourself. And that uh, brings focus uh, to where you are. So for example, uh, sometimes if I'm feeling overwhelmed by life or by the world or by the COVID <laughs> or by politics or whatever it is, I, I sometimes just pray a, a Psalm 56 verse three, whenever I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. You know, and I just repeat it to myself until the fear kind of gradually dissipates. And I'm just affirming my trust in God and letting go of that fear. Whenever I'm afraid, I will put my trust in you. I just repeat it to myself. Sometimes I just repeat it all day long. And uh, uh, it helps to uh, move that stuff along. Or sometimes, uh, uh, for God alone, my soul in silence waits. From him comes my salvation. It just orients us to God. We're looking to God. For God alone, my soul in silence waits. From God will come my salvation. So it just orients us toward God to look for and to receive whatever we need from God. Uh, uh, or simply, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be in want, you know, something that's deeply consoling maybe in a time of trouble because the words are so familiar and the imagery is so powerful and the sentiment is so uh, real to us. So um, I'd like to um, give you a psalm verse and let you go into your small groups to see uh, what you think about it. This is from Psalm 30, verse 6. In Psalm 30, verse 6, the psalmist writes, Weeping may spend the night, but joy comes in the morning. Weeping may spend the night, but joy comes in the morning. So it's a poetic way to describe a certain human experience. And I wonder if, if you have an experience that you can relate to. Uh, weeping, uh, uh, maybe a place of suffering or pain in your life that then was turned into joy, that somehow evolved and you began to see it not as a, a, a place of suffering, but a place of uh, blessing and rejoicing. So I'm going to invite you to go into groups and to take this psalm verse and to just see where it connects with you in your experience and share briefly with one another um, what what your experience might be. Uh, and then we'll come back uh, in, in uh, 10 minutes or so and have some time where uh, I can chat with you and hear what you're thinking and what questions you might have. Thanks. All right, I'm about to open the rooms, friends. We'll have about 10 minutes in our rooms tonight and I've broken you out into rooms of four, three or four people each unless there are couples, I'm, I'm having trouble splitting couples. So um, in any event, it's a, it's a quick time of sharing, but we wanna have plenty of time to come back for Q&A and then for Compline. So here we go. Uh, Brother, I do have a question on that Psalm. I have several verses I looked it up. Sometimes it's translated to my prosperity, sometimes when I'm secure. What's your understanding of the meaning of Which, that secure uh, Psalm 36? Psalm, Psalm 30, verse 6? Yes. Um, when I, we thought, mean, uh, I thought you offered us to look that, to you. Yeah, Psalm and, 30, verse 6. Yeah. When weeping uh, endures, weeping may endure the night, but joy comes from in the morning. Is that what? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and what do the other translations say? How does it read? As for me, I said in my prosperity, um, I shall never be moved. And another one says, when I felt secure, I said, uh, yeah. I will never be shaken. I said, yeah. Yeah. I was just yeah. wondering, is your interpretation of the word secure and prosperity mean that? we feel uh, secure in the presence of God? 
Yeah, I, I think what's, what's beautiful about these are that since they are poetic and since they are, they're meant to be hymns and poems, uh, we can take that and interpret it any way. There's not one right understanding and say, this is what the psalmist means. Just like you can't say about a poem, this is what the poem, poet is trying to express here. No, I, I have to read the poem and respond myself and say, what does this say to me? So if you read that word and it says prosperity, you say, well, I wonder if that's the right word or if it's some other word, would I pick another word there? Uh, you can interact with the text there and let it speak to you. And uh, that's the beauty and the flexibility of, of these Psalms and, and why it's valuable to look at different translations to see how different translators mm -hmm. try to capture that mm -hmm. uh, in, in the poetic language that they use. Yeah, no, that's, that's a good reminder. Thank you. So you, you don't, don't have to, there's no literal translation to say this is the right way to interpret that verse. Um, it speaks to you wherever you are. Brother David, do you ever record your your uh, songs and, and sell the uh, CDs? We did once a uh, long time ago, probably about 15 or 20 years ago now, and we haven't done recently, but um, you can you can come on our on our Facebook page or uh, through our website, and you can uh, worship with us, so you can hear what these psalms sound like. We uh, our evening prayer uh, is um, broadcast uh, Wednesday through Sunday, and uh, Compline is broadcast uh, Tuesday, uh, Wednesday, no Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So uh, you can join in our, our praying with us and see how the rhythm flows in a monastic setting. And uh, this, this psalm that we're praying from will be from the Book of Common Prayer. And, and uh, you should have a, a page that tells you what psalms we have. We're going to be praying that night so you can follow along with us. And maybe you'll even learn to pick up the chant and, and feel the rhythms, and then you can sing them yeah, yourself. <laughs> oh, it's, it, but it's very repetitive. Uh, oh, there are different yeah, tones yeah. that we use, and once you learn a tone, you can apply it to any psalm. So it, um, it, you'll see, see how it goes. It's not that hard. So you, some of you may want to play around with that a little bit. What is your website? Uh, it's just ssje.org. So we're the Society of St. John the Evangelist. Our initials are SSJE. So you can go to our Facebook page or go to our website and uh, uh, join us for, well, there's lots of resources on those, on those places. So. Mm -hmm. Well, if the rest of my group will allow me while I'm unmuted, we, I think all of us had had the experience of going through some really, really bad nights and things being better in the morning. Mm -hmm. uh, what we also talked about wishing that there was a book where the Psalms are divided in, into their different types Mm. so that it makes them easy to find when you want to pray a certain type yes. of and is there such a thing or I, I think you yeah you should be able to find that you might even find it on on the internet uh, a breakdown of the psalms and a listing of the psalms of lament or the psalms that are penitential or the psalms of, so yeah, that should be, that shouldn't be hard to find. Uh, I would think that you'd be able to, to find that uh, if you did a, just a little bit of research. And uh, even uh, um, uh, some kind of concordance on this uh, signs or some, uh, some other book like that may, may give you some clues. Um, if you had a commentary on the Psalms, it would probably start out with an explanation of the different types of the Psalms and probably give you some examples and you could create your, or else you could just have a read through this, the Psalter yourself 
and, uh, and categorize them yourself and say, this sounds like a psalm of lament to me, or this one, make the categories that, you, you, uh, that work for you and that help you say, uh, these are the ones that I want to turn to when I'm feeling overwhelmed uh, in life, or these are the ones I want to turn to to express joy and gratitude. Um, so you could make your own list of your own favorite ones to return to. Um, and also the verses, so those are just the verses I sent you are just verses from the Psalms that have meaning for me, but you, you have your own uh, compendium of verses that speak to you in different situations and that express something that's important for you. You might make you. an interactive index for yourself before you begin a commitment to read through the Psalms thinking about the various moods that you generally find yourself in ahead of time before you begin. You know, I get, I get very angry in, in certain situations. I get very sad. I'm, I'm joyful and full of gratitude. And that way, as you read through the Psalms, you have your own, your own listing. But I shared a link to one that might be a good place to at least begin. I wonder what else bubbled up in some of our groups this evening. Anyone else have an insight or a question that they want to share from small group time or in response to the discussion tonight? I might just say something. I, I think one of the things that the Psalms do is they recount um, the, the history of Israel. And so there are whole psalms that are given to portions of Israel's history to re recount. And these songs were uh, sung in public worship as a way of remembering. And so uh, you have an entire psalm that speaks about the exodus from Egypt, for example. Um, and I think that's an important thing to remember that uh, uh, when we are overwhelmed by life and by our present circumstances or something, to have some things that we can go back to and remember and say, yeah, uh, um, uh, Casey was saying about, uh, you know, how sometimes overwhelming uh, the, the world can feel. But if we, if we say, oh, wow, I'm just surrounded by uh, injustice now, and it seems so overwhelming. It seems like we'll never be able to make the changes we need to make, or it will never be. If we feel that kind of overwhelm, then we 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 remember something, like we remember the end of our apartheid in South Africa, or we remember the taking down, the dismantling of the Berlin Wall, or something like that. To to there are moments when when. Uh, Human communities can overcome uh, even uh, huge obstacles and injustices. Uh, and it's the same thing that we do when we gather for the Eucharist. We gather around the table and we, we offer a prayer uh, in which we recall God's good. And we thank you for creating us and for, for, uh, for choosing the people of Israel and for bringing them out of captivity. We're recounting all of these things because uh, recalling them helps to uh, to uh, plant us firm in in our faith, and we say we have reason to hope because we have seen these things in the past. It's important to do that collectively in terms of our history as a community, uh, as a Christian community, but also to do it individually uh, to remember the times where God has been there for me. And where I have been, uh, where my weeping was turned into mourning, for example, or where I, uh, God's faithfulness was proved again and again and again. And to recall those in times where we're struggling, um, to use them as uh, uh, windows of, uh, of remembrance uh, that can recall us to faith. Something that um, is coming up for me as I read through that is how long sometimes that night can seem. Mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> the span between night and morning can be incredibly 
yes. long sometimes. Um, and just feeling a lot of empathy and, and compassion for those that um, right now can only see the night. Yeah. You know, and, and sometimes needing to be the one that's holding the hope and the belief in the morning, even when others can't quite see and feel that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also remembering that for the person trapped in the night, um, sometimes they don't really want, sometimes it's not always helpful for you to sit there and tell them how great the morning is. Um, yeah. You know, like that, that's not helping them feel yeah. better. Um, yeah. uh, actually, sometimes that does quite the opposite. So um, walk in that line of compassion and, and wanting to be helpful and also recognizing that um, uh, it's, it's hard to imagine the morning sometimes when you're in the midst of that, that darkness. Yeah. Makes me think of um, Lauren Winner, who we've had invited to speak with us several times in her book, Mudhouse Sabbath, where she reflects on traditions that maybe um, one might say in, in the move, in the shift from a Jewish paradigm to a Christian paradigm, there was some, there was some baby that got thrown out with some bathwater, right? Um, and sitting Shiva, the, the, the tradition of just walking into those places of great darkness with others who are hurting and um, not doing so with the intention of, of bringing the light and lighting up the whole place, but just being present in that moment with someone. Yeah. And what that is and what a wonderful tradition that is in the Jewish community. Great reflections, y'all. Um, we have just a couple minutes. Anyone else have um, something from your group conversations? I am especially grateful for the list of uh, verses that Brother David sent out that um, Mother Rebecca made available to us and relayed out. Um, I took a quick glance at it and um, there truly are, I mean, there's several dozen marvelous uh, mantras in there for, um, for just repetition. And um, uh, I, I echo Brother David in commending that to you to, to have those become so familiar that those words may even uh, just be there available to you on the, on the tip of your tongue when you're experiencing both uh, joy and um, hardship and worry and hope and whatever that emotion may be, um, longing. Um, having this beautiful and extremely ancient language uh, can give a sort of framework um, for your emotions, and um, I commend it to you completely. It's it's um, a lovely thing for those of us who've been praying the office through the through the um, Facebook page, um, praying the office uh, occasionally to have these psalms and these phrases, and, and when we when we finish, to just sort of come back to that psalm after we finish morning prayer or evening prayer or whatever it might be, and just sort of stick with that that phrase for a little bit. I, it's such a good exercise. Well, I think it's time for Compline, everybody. Um, and uh, what, a, what a joy it is to pray Compline with Brother David. So I'm gonna share my screen. Um, uh, I um, would um, ask Brother David, if you will be the people in, uh, as I share this, um, uh, if everyone else is gonna mute because the cacophony of voices on Zoom makes it hard to hear. So um, I will be the efficient, uh, if you can see it, um, and if you will be the people. And when we get to the hymn, um, I will um, toggle over, and I actually have the CD from the SSJ Compline. <laughs> so um, I'm going to play one of the hymns that's included in that um, Compline compilation. Uh, which is just wonderful. And it's, and, and we'll, so we'll listen and sing if you want to from your home, abide with me. All right. The Lord Almighty grant us a peaceful night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. 
the maker of heaven and earth. Let us confess our sins to God. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, we have sinned against you through our own fault in thought and word and deed and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us all our offenses and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. May the Almighty God grant us forgiveness of all our sins and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the, Glory Father, to the Father and to the Son and, the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Um, why don't we um, alternate verses, uh, Brother David? Okay. Answer me when I call, O God, defender of my cause. You set me free when I am hard pressed. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. You mortals, how long will you dishonor my glory? How long will you worship dumb idols and run after false gods? Know that the Lord does wonders for the faithful. When I call upon the Lord, he will hear me. Tremble then and do not sin. Speak to your heart in silence upon your bed. Offer the appointed sacrifices and put your trust in the Lord. Many are saying, oh, that we might see better times. Lift up the light of your countenance upon us, O Lord. You have put gladness in my heart more than when grain and wine and oil increase. I lie down in peace. At once I fall asleep. For only you, Lord, make me dwell in safety. In you, O Lord, have I taken refuge. Let me never be put to shame. Deliver me in your righteousness. Incline your ear to me. Make haste to deliver me. Be my strong rock, a castle to keep me safe. For you are my crag and my stronghold. For the sake of your name, lead me and guide me. Take me out of the net they have secretly set for me. For you are my tower of strength. Into your hands, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Glory to the Father, and to, and the, to Son, the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, now and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Thanks be to God.
Into your hands, O Lord, I commend my spirit. For you have redeemed me, O Lord, O God of truth. Keep us, O Lord, as the apple of your eye. Hide us under the shadow of your wings. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father in heaven, heaven hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. Let us pray. Be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the hours of this night so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this life may rest in your eternal changelessness through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night. And give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ. Give rest to the weary. Bless the dying. Soothe the suffering. Pity the afflicted. Shield the joyous. And all for your love's sake. Amen. Friends, I invite your prayers at this time, either silently or aloud. I thank you, Lord, for the witness of the Society of St. John the Evangelist, for the brothers. 
for that community and its prayers. For all those in our world who are now feeling trapped in a time of weeping in the midst of night. Give them hope. Hope that the morning will dawn. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Lord, you now have set your servant free to go in peace as you have promised. For these eyes of mine have seen the Savior, whom you have prepared for all the world to see a light to enlighten the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ and asleep we may rest in peace. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The almighty and merciful Lord, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen. Wonderful friends, thank you all. Brother David, what a gift it has been to have you with us tonight. So, my pleasure. Thank you so much for the invitation. Yeah. Uh, friends, uh, peace be with you all, and we'll see you again hopefully uh, soon. We'll be back together to continue this exploration next Wednesday, uh, but hope to see many of you this coming Sunday as well. All right. Good night, everyone. Good night.